Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to take a quick look at the Cadis Vim, a small Amlogic S905 single board computer. This is actually the Cadis Vim Pro with 2 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of built-in storage. It's a really nice looking single board computer, one of the best packaged computers that I've ever received. The only place I was able to buy one of these was from GearBest, and they're $49.99. It does run an older Amlogic S905X CPU that comes in a lot of cheaper Android boxes. It's actually marketed on GearBest as a do-it-yourself Android TV box. It runs pretty good. It's got a lot of features built in. There's also a few operating systems available for this board. In this video, I'm going to be testing the built-in Android operating system that comes on it when you get it from GearBest. I'm going to leave links to where you can buy this board. I'll also leave links to the Cadis Vim website. Now they just released the Cadis Vim 2, which I don't have my hands on just yet. It has the S912 CPU in it, paired with 3 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. So I'll leave links to that also. I'm not sure if it's going to perform much better than this because all the Android boxes that I've tested with the S912 don't perform much better than the S905X does. In this video, I'm going to be running Android. I'll test out some benchmarks and a few native Android apps. But first, let's go over the specs. The CPU is a quad-core Amlogic S905X clocked at 1.5 GHz. The GPU is a Mali 450 MP. As for RAM, it uses 2 GB of DDR3. Storage, you can either get one with 8 GB of built-in storage or 16 GB of built-in storage. The one with 16 GB is a bit more expensive. SD card slot, USB Type-C port, two USB 2.0 ports, Gigabit Ethernet. It also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. So I want to get into the operating system, but first we're going to do a size comparison. From the left to the right, we have the Cadis Vim Pro, the Raspberry Pi 3, the Raspberry Pi Zero, the Odroid C2, the Odroid XU4, and the Hi Key 960. So it's on par with the Pi 3 size. It's a little bigger because it does come with a case. Now it's time to move on to the Android operating system that comes pre-installed on the Cadis Vim Pro. Like I said in the beginning, I'm not even going to try video playback. If you want to see that, there are tons of Android boxes on YouTube right now with this same CPU. It will perform the same. Alright, so it has a really nice clean Android build for it. This is Android 7.1.1. It is pre-installed on the internal storage of the Cadis Vim Pro. Like I said, we're not even going to test video playback using Kodi. I'm sure it'll stream content perfectly using your favorite add-ons. It will also play some 4K content pretty well. Let's go into the settings. Now this is the stock Android settings. This is another one of those weird cross builds between Android TV and Android phone operating system. I really do like the way they set these up. Android 7.1.1. We're going to go to IDA64 and check out the specs here. Now, a lot of you might already know that these CPUs are advertised as 2 GHz, but they do not run at 2 GHz. They're 1.5. This one has 2 GB of RAM. CPU, 4 core, A53, 1.5 GHz. It's the S905X. For the display, we have the Mali 450 MP. Now, I think this is a quad core GPU, it only does OpenGL 2.0. Before we get into some benchmarks, I did try Asphalt Extreme, and I cannot get a controller to work correctly with the game. You have to play it with your mouse, and I'm not into that. It does run pretty well, but I'm not even going to showcase it here. Until we can get a fix for some kind of controller support, it's really not worth it. Let's move on to the Antutu benchmark I ran. I did have a fan on the CPU with all of these tests that I performed. It scored a 33,821. Not too great. It's not bad for an Android TV box either. I mean, if you're only wanting something like this for video playback, it should do pretty good. But the 3D score was very low. So playing the high-end games, you're not going to get the best performance out of it. Next benchmark I ran was Geekbench 4. I ran the CPU benchmark and the compute. For the single core score, we scored a 625. And for multi-core, we scored a 1,799. As for the Geekbench 4 Compute Benchmark, we scored a 1,274. So these scores are on the lower end of the spectrum. This is an older chip. It's the Amlogic, and it's been used in thousands of devices around the world. For 3D Mark, I ran Ice Storm Extreme, and we scored a 3,444. So this does have the MP4 450 GPU built in. 
it's an older GPU, so don't expect maximum performance. I also tested Minecraft, and the controller worked with this very well. I actually tried three different controllers with Asphalt Extreme, and I could not get the A button to work. But it does work with Minecraft Pocket Edition. Runs good, a little bit of stutter here and there. Let's go ahead and light off some dynamite and see what happens. Minecraft Pocket Edition is very well optimized for lower end devices, so it does run pretty well on here. If you go into the settings, you can make it run even better by turning the chunks down a little bit. It's set at 8 right now, so if you go to 6 or 4, you probably won't get the stuttering I'm getting. So overall, this is a cool little S905 box. It's $49.99 on GearBest, but you can always pick up $20 boxes with this same CPU on eBay. If you want it just for Cody, this is a cool option. The, in my opinion, one of the best things this has going for it is the look of the board itself. It comes in this stacked case and it just looks really good. The other thing this board has going for it is the ability to install Linux. They do offer a Linux build on the Cadis Vim website. I'm gonna try that out in a future video later this week. So stay tuned to the channel for that. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I'll leave links down below. If not, I completely understand, but like always, Thanks for watching.